when I started talking about this five years ago, literally a lot of my colleagues thought I'd lost my rocker. They're like, Conrad has gone off the deep end. And now my <laughs> income from, from this business is so strong that I don't give a shit if no one ever hires me as a sales consultant again, quite frankly. I really don't. Hey, fitness fans, welcome back to the Future of Fitness podcast and interview series. This is your host, Eric Malzone, and this is episode number 82. I get to talk to Casey Conrad. So Casey is a veteran of the fitness industry. She's been doing it for a while. She's an expert in sales and sales training, and she has carved out quite a name for herself, uh, and rightfully so. But that's not why she's here. She's here on this show to talk about the future of biofeedback. Uh, you can hear her words, you can feel her words, how excited she is for the potential that this has for our industry and how it can change everything, how it can differentiate us in our markets and uh, really help us change the way that we interact with our clients in a much, much better way and really make an impact on our, our community. So um, she's super excited. I'm really excited and uh, check it out, listen to it, and you can contact her as well if you have any questions. And before we get on to the interview, I am really excited uh I, I 300 plus interviews i've done with the fitness profession uh all all over the world right in the last nine months i've interviewed 300 plus people and i've been seeking ways where i can create value creating impact in the fitness industry and, and it's finally coming to fruition uh the vision is clear and it's actually already happening because the network is building so it's called the fitness accelerator you can go to fitnessprofessionalonline.com forward slash fit accelerator.com and what it is we're elevating the industry through better networks we need better networks you guys this industry is young um, but it's just not up to par with many of the other industries that we look at dentists lawyers attorneys think about that right we want to be a professional industry and this is the way we're going to do it we're going to put the smartest minds in this in the same room and we're going to work it out and it's going to be amazing it's already happening so go to fitnessprofessionalonline.com forward slash fit accelerator and check it out it's two weeks for free come join the community guys it's a movement it's a tribe it's a community it's really awesome and you're going to want to be there from the beginning so without further ado let's go to episode number 82 casey conrad casey conrad welcome to the show thank you for having me it's a pleasure to be here yeah um it's always a pleasure talking to you i've only uh had a uh you know, a few conversations with you, but every time I, I walk away feeling a bit more energized than, than when I walked in. So I hope everyone gets a little bit of that uh, on today's call and uh, or this interview. And if you can, because, you know, for people who are just listening, uh, describe where you are right now, the background that I see behind you uh, in the video. Yeah, it's a little, little slice of heaven here. I'm in a, a small town called West Gloucester, Rhode Island, which is in the northwest corner by Connecticut. And this is a family. Uh, camp or lake house that uh, I've been coming to since I was a, a little little girl. So uh, it's uh, awesome to be able to come up here and just completely unplug and have this be my office for <laughs> for the summer. Yeah, that's awesome. So, um, Casey, let's. I know there's uh, some very very specific topics that we're going to cover today that um, are very uh, in tune with with the title and. and purpose of this this podcast so it's called the future of fitness but before we do that tell people how you got to where you are because it's you know you, you've really made a name for yourself in the industry in, in, in a certain way so give us give us some background on how that kind of happened and, and what that is sure well I, I guess if you want to start at the very beginning uh i've always been a jock uh, i was actually the first girl in the state of rhode island to fight for and play in boys little league nice. way way back a long time ago uh 40 something years ago but uh anyway so um, when I was in college, I got into martial arts and I ended up, of course, being the workaholic that I am, I worked for a martial arts studio while I was in college mm -hmm. managing it. Actually, they had two locations. When I graduated with my degree in international business, I went to work for the International Trade Administration, helping small businesses export products out of the United States. Well, that's a division of the government. And after six months, I realized there was no way I was working for the government. It was coffee break time and don't, don't do anything that's uh, progressive. So I very much to my family's dismay, up and quit, gave my two week notice without any, you know, plan, so to speak. And when I looked in the classified ad in Washington, D.C., there was a small ad for a salesperson. And I thought, well health club sales, martial arts sales, 
basically the same. So I went and interviewed and ended up getting hired by this company. It was going to be temporary, Eric. It was going to be a temporary job, right? It's always like that. And I fell in love with with the fitness industry, the proper fitness industry, because obviously I'd been in fitness and had actually been a member of Gold's Gym in Connecticut. But uh, anyway, so I started working for them and uh, went from a salesperson to an assistant manager, to a general manager, to a district manager, to the sales trainer for the, uh, they had had 44 locations. I managed the Northern locations uh, from sales training. Mm -hmm. And then in 1989, I broke off and started my own consulting company. And uh, I've had a very wide and varied uh, life since 1989. In, in, two, in nine, 2000, boy, years go by fast, I started a chain of women's weight loss centers. Hmm. And that went and grew to 122 locations, franchised in three countries. And I sold that in 2008 and went back into consulting um, had another weight loss licensed company that I sold in 2013. And um, for the past, really since 2009, I have been veering very heavily, even though I still do sales training for clubs and personal trainers, very heavily into the wellness space, uh, which is really what brings me here today. So it's been an amazing, and I'm an attorney, which is hysterical. You know, people are like, yeah. huh? Yeah. Like what? I'm like, yeah. Where did you fit um, that in? Well, actually I went to school nights. Um, when I had initially gone to American university for my undergraduate degree, it was the intention of going to law school there. And I, I just hated school. I wanted to work. I wanted to make money. So I said, oh, I'll take a couple of years work for the ITA, then go back to law school. Of course, that didn't work out with everything I just told you about. And so I moved back to Rhode Island in 1991. And 1992, yeah, uh, 1994 to 1998, I went to law school nights. Oh, wow. So finished law school, passed the bar, took one case and said, what the hell were you thinking? Why would you want to do this crap? Yeah. And that was it. That yeah. was it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's interesting. I, uh, I thought I wanted to be an attorney. Um, and then I went and took one real estate law class uh, at Boston College when I was a teen. I'm like, no, that's no. Yeah. I don't want to do it. And it only took me, it took me like half a semester to figure that out. Uh, yeah. And you know, it, it's, it's an energy thing. Yeah, I, that's literally what made my decision. It wasn't the mental side that I said, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. I, I, I specialize in trust in the States, which I thought was going to be like helping people and, you know, sure. and it's still just negative. People are always arguing. So anyway, so I said, you know what? No way. It doesn't matter. It's been a great education. It's helped me along the way. And uh, I use it all the time daily, you know, contracts or anything like that. So it was good education, but just a, little side route. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're, you know, as you evolved as a, a salesperson, um, what, what were the qualities? Was it, was it your athletic background, the competitiveness? Was it your, your personality traits? Was it, um, perseverance? Was it your ability to deal with rejection? What, what are the things that you think that that kind of recipe that made you successful and, and so good at what you did? All of the above, all of the above. But let me just tell you this, that um, I believe that in order to be good in sales, um, you need to have, and, and I'm talking about really sales position, right? Mm -hmm. Not just selling. Like if we're talking to personal trainers, you're not going to get very many personal trainers that are true salespeople, but you can get them to like and appreciate the process of educating someone to want to have their services. But for true sales, I think it's two things uh, in particular. Number one, you must be competitive. You got to be. If, if you're not a competitive person that says, I'm going to push through, I'm going to work hard. This is going to take, you know, it, it's going to take work and I'm going to get rewarded for the effort I put in. Mm -hmm. uh, you are not going to be good in sales because of the rejection. Athletes are, and when I hire salespeople, that's what I look for. I look for someone that did even high school athletics. I don't care because, and team sports. Uh, I love team sports because it, you know, shows that they can get along with other people. But mm -hmm. um, athletes realize that second sucks and you got to work hard to win. Uh, yeah. And then the second thing truly is 
a passion for whatever it is you're selling, right? Because if, if I was to try to sell widgets or cars or something, that's not, I'm not going to be passionate. So I really believe when it comes to fitness, I say to people all the time, are you a product of your product, right? Uh, are you living the benefits and privileges of a regular exercise program? Because when people see me and they go, wow, you don't look and you don't act 53, I say, well, I do. It's the rest of the world that looks like shit. <laughs> and, and some people laugh and some people don't laugh. They don't think it's very funny. Usually the ones that don't look so good. Right. But it's that, when, it's that when Harry met Sally moment. I want what she's having. Yeah. And so I really believe, and I'm not talking about thin or anything like that, just fit. It, yeah. You need to be living the benefits and privileges of regular exercise in this industry. So I think whatever it is that person wants to sell, if they're passionate about it, then I think now we can teach you the baseline skills to be able to sell. And really selling is nothing more than education plus motivation. I say S equals plus M. That's all it is. It's not 101 closes or anything like that. It's truly educating people on why they should do it and then finding what their motivation is. What is that trigger that's going to get them up in the morning and push them through the challenges of exercise? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I had a, you know, I still, everybody sells, right? But my first 10 years out of college, I was in various sales positions and I always did well. You know, I, I always got to, you know, I was a sales manager at the age of 24, which was a horrible decision on their part, right? To make me a sales manager at 24. Um, yeah. But, uh, of course. You know, I, I, I always did well. And there was a couple of things I noticed over time was that um, when, I even sold like legal publishing, which I'm, you know, sorry to my sales managers if they're listening to this, but I was terribly disinterested, you know, it was a paycheck, but I still did well. Um, but I also tend to work less than most salespeople and do better. And one of the reasons I thought was, is I really concentrated on efficacy versus efficiency because all the time they talk about sales. Well, if you make X amount of phone calls, you get this amount of meetings, you get this amount of proposals and you'll sell this many. And you're like, well, that's pretty simple. But what if I just got really, really good at five clients in five meetings, getting to know them in and out. And I show up, I build a relationship, and then actually they just ask you to buy things eventually, and that's it. Absolutely. And Friday's off. And that was kind of my model, and I, I did well. But once I started my own gym, I really got passionate about what I was, what I was doing, you know, the thing I was selling, which was you know, essentially health and community, um, then everything took off. It was just so natural and it was so easy. So, yeah. Yeah, I think everything you're saying is uh, – is, is, darn spot on. So um, let's talk about the next evolution here. Like what's going on now? Talk to, talk to me. I mean, I'm privy to it, but a lot of people probably aren't yet. So let's, let's get in it because this is some cool, cool shit. It is. It's really cool shit. And uh, I was actually talking to someone overseas two nights ago about it. And he was blown away. Yeah. Uh, we did a demonstration. But so uh, in 2009, I got introduced to uh, Young Living Essential Oils. And I only give you that as a backdrop because you don't go from where I was, lawyer, very grounded, dad was a surgeon, mom was a nurse, <laughs> you know, very allopathic to where I am today. But um, that got me into the wellness space and the natural space. And I became fascinated with it that, wow, I was no longer needing Advil for my back. I was using these natural things. And so I started to uh, get deeper and deeper and get exposed to more what, let's call them cutting edge future technologies in the natural world. Yes. And anybody, anybody that is uh, a good business person, one of the things that they do is they keep themselves plugged in so that they can identify the leading indicators and be what we call an early adopter and not be a lagger where by the time they decide to make a decision to get into something that some competitor or two competitors have already really become the the, the noted brand or the noted uh, facility that does that. So mm -hmm. I started to notice this shift in consciousness. And if you are paying attention to brands in the supermarket and television ads, you'll see it. Even Facebook, you'll see it. Our population is becoming increasingly uninterested in allopathic medicine 
even though we're pushing drugs all the time, there's this whole generation of people, boomers, late boomers, that don't think the surgeon or the doctor is the end all and the be all, and millennials that absolutely want to stay out of the system, right? Yeah. So you're seeing this shift towards more natural, organic. I mean, I put a post up the other day, no joke, Eric. Doritos now has an organic version of Doritos. I'm like, <laughs> are you kidding me? This is so stupid, but they're smart. They're seeing the trend. No doubt they're seeing sales in certain areas. I'm certain there's certain areas of the countries that don't pay attention to this yet, but in, in areas where you have a higher concentration, more urban and, uh, let's call it, uh, socioeconomically higher levels, people are turning to everything organic, non-GMO, you know, and they're looking for ways to, uh, you're hearing about detoxing and, you know, glyphosate and all of these things. So I ended up getting into a space called biofeedback that basically, and biofeedback is nothing more than something that reads the body physiologically. Well, advanced biofeedback can read the body energetically and tell us what is out of balance in the body. And so, and this is just one of many pieces that I am involved in, but it is kind of the umbrella piece because I can take a client and I can connect them to this device and I can give them leading indicators of what is going on energetically in their body. So, for example, let's say, uh, let's say you have, you know, most people have digestive issues in today's day and age because they eat too much wheat and genetically modified foods and sugar, et cetera, et cetera. But they're normal. That's normal for them. So they don't think about it. Anyway, so this device could identify that maybe you are not alkaline enough. It could identify. And when I say that, I shouldn't say it that way. I should say, well, identify that your alkalinity is out of balance. It would identify that maybe your stomach hydrochloric acid is out of balance. Now, I'm not a doctor, and this is not diagnosing it. So what happens is, is if, let's say you are my client, and you are having joint discomfort or slow recovery. If acidity or alkalinity came up as out of balance, I don't know whether you are too alkaline or too acid, but we can probably make some pretty good assumptions based on what's going on in your body. I've never met someone in modern society that was too alkaline, right? So this stuff, in my opinion, is absolutely the future of wellness. The question is, will fitness clubs be smart enough to embrace it and bring it in, or is it going to go medispa route, chiropractor route, naturopath route? I work with a lot of those people, but it, uh, the clubs that I work with on this, they're getting extraordinary client outcomes because it's a leading indicator for wellness disturbances. Wow. Very interesting. It's so fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting. I mean, I have, um, you know, when I was living in Santa Barbara, we had a partner, uh, regenerative health, um, Dr. Ace, and he was on this show uh, about 40 episodes ago. And, um, you know, so I got to work with her and they're very, very, I mean, she's, in, she's a naturopath and they're very advanced in some of the technologies that they had going on. And I was blown away. I was like, Oh wow. She's like, yeah, you have no energy going, you know, through this part of your, your, your that's why you're this hurts because of this. Right. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. You can figure yes. that out. Meridians. Right. I mean, this stuff has been around forever. I mean, long before mm-hmm. our current modern medicine, Chinese and Ayurvedic medicine, which is energy medicine, has been around. We just happen to have some technologies today, Eric, that are are able, allowing us to have the ability to measure those energetic frequencies uh, in a way that helps us uh, help our clients. Yeah. So, Casey, walk walk me through it, please. You know, explain to me like I'm a four-year-old. If if I'm, let's say I'm a client. No. Yep. Let's say I'm a um, let's say I'm a facility owner, health club owner, um, yep. or a micro gym owner. Um, what what is the device that I buy? How do I implement it into my my uh, systems and my practice? Yeah. So believe it or not, it's software, Eric, that goes onto a tablet or an iPad. Okay. okay. And there's a couple out there um, that people can get. Um, one is called the Quantum Infinity. Another is called the Genius. 
And uh, I have both, believe it or not. I like both of them. Um, and um, so there are leads that are connected into it that you attach to the client. And you literally only take their name, their birth date, and whether they're male or female, and then run them. You don't, you don't ask them for any information ahead of time because I don't want to know. I don't, I, don't want, I don't want anything to pre, give me preconceived notions about what's going on with that person. Now, if you're their trainer, you might have some insight, but um, you know, a lot of people, it's hard for them to wrap their head around this that, wow, I had a guy the other night that was on the, on the device, and it can be a little embarrassing. It showed up his urinary system was out of balance, mm -hmm. and it showed that his urinary elimination flow was out of balance. Now, I don't know this guy from a hole in the wall, and I'm like, okay, so you're not peeing right. You know, it can be a little like, yikes. And he was like, that's unbelievable. How did it know that the energy to my urinary system, specifically my flow, he says, it is. And it's recent. Right. You know, and so, and people get freaked out about it because I don't know what's going on. There's, there is absolutely zero diagnosis here. It's just energy. It's meridians. It's a, how, can a, how can an acupuncturist look at your tongue, look at your eyeball, and take your pulse and go, oh, your kidney yang is low. Right. So this is just like a modern day version of that that allows you and I, the lay person, to help people find out how to tweak. So what happens, I've created a proprietary system within this, and it's going to sound like a sales pitch, but it's not, because um, I have plenty of people that I work with on this one-on-one, -on -one, but we have what are called lifestyle recommendations. So the device can actually energetically tell you what things that you could change, either add or remove in your lifestyle could help your energy feel. So it might say, um, reduced alcohol consumption beneficial. It might say more sunlight beneficial, or it might say vitamin D beneficial, right? It might be able to identify that you're not going to be able to get enough vitamin D from the sun. So you really need some uh, support now, but vitamin D beneficial. I don't know why. I don't know why. Just energetically. So, and then of course we say to people, look, take this information. Hopefully, you're going to own it. Do some research uh, and kind of create a, a path for yourself. Because that's really what I'm about. I'm about education to get people to take all of their health. This is it. This is not a dress rehearsal. You do not get a do-over. And, like, why are you 40 years old, 50 pounds overweight with joint problems? Because you haven't taken ownership of your health. So my goal is to get people to take ownership. And what I find is the more educated someone becomes about genetically modified foods, lifestyle practice, is intermittent fasting, blah, 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 then they're not, yes, they work with their coach but they're taking ownership of it and they're making those changes which become long-term, not a short-term quick fix so I can lose 20 pounds. So, yeah. So anyway, so that's my goal with that uh, is to get them to take ownership. And so the lifestyle factors really help them. But of course we say to them, look, if you have any questions about this, go see your doctor or your naturopath. They can direct you more specifically because they are able to actually do blood work and things like that. Yeah. So that was, that was my, essentially my next question too, is, you know, where does this fall in the scope of practice, right? At what point, what is the line where, you know, um, you know, can any fitness professional, any, you know, um, trainer going and hook these things up, you know, is there any kind of certification or, um, you know, background they need to have, or can they just go right into it? And then, and then where does that scope of practice definitively Stop. Yeah. Right. yeah. So the answer to that is it only definitively stops where the person's uh, good judgment stops because right. it would be right. easy. It would be right. easy to make assumptions. Yeah. Oh, 
oh, your, your hydration is off. You need to drink more water. No, 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 no. A lot of times for fitness people, their hydration is off, but if they go to their doctor and have it tested, their electrolytes are off mm -hmm. because they're drinking too much water and not taking enough minerals. So I don't know what, what it is. So it would be easy for somebody. Now that's where I run a completely separate training program that if somebody decides to get my, what are called panels, that it's all included and wrapped into that. Um, and we teach them, look guys, and everywhere, every page of every report of every disclaimer says, this is not treating, diagnosing, curing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you, know, you just have to, if someone goes through the proper training and they're smart, you know, then they realize where that line is. Anybody yeah. can do it. Certainly somebody that has a little bit of anatomy and physiology background can help to put some pieces together better uh, because there are connections, right? If it comes up, you know, endocrine out of balance and then it comes up blood sugar out of balance, there's probably a good chance that, that person's got some pancreas issues. They might, you know, find out and go to their doctor and find out that they could use a an enzyme that would help their support their pancreas. So it, again, it's, it's kind of like opening the information flow for that person to then take that information and go to somebody that has a proper, I like referring people to a natural path, mm -hmm. you know, so that they can go that way. Some people go to their doctor and then they say, Oh, well, my trainer hooked me up to this device and it said my blood sugar was out of balance and the doctor rolls his or her eyes and is like a uh, quack. Uh, so, and quite frankly, Eric, a lot of people come in, particularly women come in and they say, I've been to my doctor for the last three years. I've gained 30 pounds. I'm exercising. I eat right. I know something's wrong with my thyroid. Uh, but I fall within the normal ranges. Well, guess what? They do, but energetically, they light up like a Christmas tree. Right. And so dis-ease ultimately manifests in disease, but it could take decades for that to happen. If you can find out what's energetically out of balance, just like the Chinese do, and start to work with the body and your lifestyle factors to help support that, guess what? you're probably going to be healthier longer. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So, you know, if, uh, how does one get started with this stuff? I mean, you know, what are the costs? Like, what is your, what is, you know, what does your program entail? Like how, how, you know, what, what's, what's step number one here? Yeah. Um, well, if, if somebody goes right now, we are under a complete rebuild with our website. So I don't have a button for this because we really just launched this to the public a couple of months ago. And mm -hmm. I've only worked off of referrals from within my mailing list mm -hmm. uh, just because I wanted to kind of perfect it. Even though I've been doing it for five years, I really hadn't rolled it out because I didn't, quite frankly, to be honest, I didn't want to risk my entire reputation as a consultant, because when I started talking about this five years ago, literally a lot of my colleagues thought I'd lost my rocker. They're like, Conrad has gone off the deep end. And now my <laughs> income from, from this business is so strong that I don't give a shit if no one ever hires me as a sales consultant again, quite frankly. Okay. I really don't. Awesome. And so, so to answer your question, they can go to my website and, uh, you know, just do a, a request form. And what we'll do is we'll send them the link to a webinar replay a Zoom webinar replay that explains and actually physically shows them the system and how it works. Uh, to answer your question about cost, total in, as long as you own an iPad or um, a tablet uh, for my system and all the software, it's like $1,999, a couple grand. It's nothing. It's nothing. Yeah, nothing. yeah that's nothing. That's great. Yep. That's huge. And that's such a differentiator too. So let's, let's talk about that, you know, from, from a sales and marketing standpoint, you know, once this thing's integrated into a, uh, a program, how do you, yeah. how do you market it? How do you sell it? Well, we start initially by doing a launch at the club with members and because typically one of the trainers or the owner uh, this has worked best with smaller boutique facilities where the owner's boots are on the ground, you know, and, and they're integrated. Um, but, uh, typically what we do is we do a launch 
uh, and during my training program, I have them go out and find 10 people for a free assessment. But those people are so blown away uh, when, you know, when they get done that they go and tell other people. And then we say, okay, now we're going to do them for $49 for the next 10 people. And then we go up to 79 and then not, you know, so it, it rolls in because it takes about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour to do a really good assessment sure. and talk to the person. Uh, so, uh, so anyway, so that we kind of roll out that way, but then the really interesting piece is we have developed these niche programs, sleep, energy, um, uh, joint discomfort, uh, what's the other one we got? We got sleep, we got energy, we got joint discomfort, and there's one more that uh, fails. I'm in too much of a great environment here. My brain isn't uh, thinking of it. <laughs> but uh, these programs, oh, weight loss, of course, weight loss. Weight How loss, could I yeah, forget naturally. weight loss? Yeah. Yeah. So there are these six-week programs. So when someone comes in, there are these special panels that come as part of their package that, it specifically identifies what are the disruptors energetically in their sleep. It might be EMF, it might be blue light, ther blue light um, uh, distraction, it could be um, uh, noise pollution, it could be hygiene, sleep hygiene, things like dogs in the room, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, and then, of course, the lifestyle factors. And we, have, we do use thing, essential oil products in our panel, so if somebody does that, they can recommend that as well. And... We sell these six-week programs to people that aren't members of the club. If someone in the club wants to do it, great. But what, where this becomes a huge piece, Eric, is the, I call it the shiny new penny differentiator. This thing is, we are getting so many referrals. The average person that goes through a biofeedback immediately refers us to people. Immediately. Their spouse and then a good friend. And then you got to go, you got to go do this, they say, you know? And uh, yeah. um, I've only had about one person out of a hundred walk away and go, that's bullshit. Yeah. And it's just where they are. Right, right. You know, it just, they don't have a belief that would allow them to do it. But this stuff, and just so the listeners know, because I know we're probably running short on time. This stuff is mainstream in Europe, Eric. Yeah. This is totally mainstream in Europe. Uh, you know, you've spent time o overseas, you know, uh, in Germany, in Budapest, in Eastern Europe. This stuff has been around for 20 years, but it just doesn't fit in with our traditional allopathic model. And it will never be insurance reimbursed ever because that's not the model for pharmaceutical. They want you on prescription drugs forever. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, it's so interesting. And I, I put myself back into my gym owner day, you know, like 2015, Eric, right? And uh, I was always looking for the next thing to differentiate. You know, when I initially started, we were a CrossFit gym. That was a differentiator. That that went away after four or five years, right? So rebranded to a higher end uh, gym. And, then, you know, people started catching that. So it was always like, you know, as a facility or club owner, you're What's always the next? To find the next thing because uh, as soon as you think you're differentiated and it works, someone else is going to take that and, and and model after you and then you that's can... right they're gonna they're gonna imitate it yeah 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 so this is awesome yep. so where, where do you so, think um you know let's put this not too far two years down the road where you know if you have the yeah. impact even one tenth of the impact that you're you're setting out to have you know where, where do you think yep. um this can be in the united states in the next few years well i think the boutiques are going to embrace it first for a number of reasons number one that's who i market to because i tried to market to my traditional sales training clients that had a big staff and they just don't have the intimacy in the club uh, and the owner's typically not that engaged it's mm -hmm. gross generalization um you know so i think that you're going to start seeing this stuff a little bit more mainstream especially since uh biofeedback for things like pain and depression have actually been approved by the United States government uh, when done in a medical setting. You know, so I think you're going to start to see more and more people hearing about it, embracing it, um, and um, the results. That's what we find. It, when we go into a marketplace, 
and we run programs like the sleep program or, you know, obviously weight loss is an easy one, but the energy, sleep, energy, and discomforts, joint discomforts, those three are three of the biggest issues that people are facing today. And when we start running those, it creates a buzz. So I think you're going to see pockets of places that are going to, and of course, closer to urban areas will be faster to, to move on this than some. But um, I, I think you're going to start to see it. When do I think you're going to see something about this on the cover of the Wall Street Journal? 2030. There it is. There's you the know? prediction. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, I think it's going to take that long. I really yeah. do. Because yeah. it's so woo-woo. Do I think you'll start seeing things in industry magazines? Yes. Because uh, just in Club Solutions magazine two months ago, there was an advertisement for a company that's selling red light therapy to clubs as programming tool. Yeah. So it's, it's, that's all in the same space. We've got other energetic devices that, that we put into some of these facilities that want to, because here's the other thing. I'm just last thing. Yeah. When you look at the big box clubs right now that are really on the cutting edge, the most popular new thing right now that you're going to start to see is called recovery stations or recovery rooms. And they're putting in all kinds of things that people can come in. And that's because people need to recover and they're not. We live in a toxic environment. And so this falls right into that space. Totally. We combine these biofeedback. We can actually give people biofeedback energy with aroma sessions and they leave going like they just left a massage but didn't have to get naked it's great yeah 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 awesome i love it yeah and the, you know the circles that, that i've i've swim in too with the, some of the coaches i talked to and my mentors in the past this is they're already on a lot of this you know, absolutely um you know i think of the guys at opex i think of you know regenerative health i think of all these people who um you know are very much uh, you know embracing technology and not scared shitless of it and uh, yep. you know, they're 10 years from now they're going to be reaping major benefits just like you so uh, what is the website casey uh it's healthclubsalestraining.com that i just want to say one last thing yeah as you know as i know when i owned my facilities and i had three of them and was in them michael gerber says that you're working in your business not on your business and as a gym owner it's so easy to just stay working in your business day after day because your time for money model uh, doesn't allow you to get out and disconnect and get on to the next thing. You have to. If you want a business to be viable long-term and ultimately saleable, you have to, have to, have to stay ahead of the curve. So take the time. And, and do that, even though it might mean a short-term loss of income, it's going to ultimately mean a much more successful business operation. Yeah, I love it. So thank you. Thank you for coming on and, uh, and sharing this. I love, I don't think you're crazy, by the way. I, I, think, uh, I think you're just, uh, you're seeing something that other people don't see yet. And uh, I think it's awesome. So I appreciate you coming on and sharing all this. Uh, I think it Thanks, Eric. make an earlier impact, you know, if people hear about it. And I know I'm going to go send this, uh, this raw interview to a couple people that I know, uh, who I think would, would embrace it right away. So yeah, cool. thanks for coming on, Casey. It's always a pleasure uh, talking yeah. to you. Uh, like yeah. I said, I always feel more energized after talking to you than when I started. So that's always a good sign, right? That's cool. Same here. <laughs> right on. Ladies and gentlemen, Casey Conrad. Hey, fitness fans, don't leave yet. It's your host, Eric Malzone, and I have a quick favor to ask. Actually, three favors. So, number one, if you're a fan of our show, I ask you to do something that takes under three minutes. Go to iTunes, please, and subscribe to our show. Please, please, please. It means so much to us. It's so important. And then give us a favorable review. We would really, really appreciate it. And uh, I can't tell you how much it means and helps us out. So it only takes two minutes of your day and uh, it means a lot to us. So please do that. Number two, go to our YouTube channel or Fitness Marketing Alliance and uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel there. Number three, if you like this episode or any of the episodes that we've released, share it on social. That's huge, that's a big deal for us. And uh, we put a lot of work into these episodes uh, trying to give you great actionable content uh, for the fitness industry. So that would mean a lot. And that's it. 
So we have some big plans coming up for this show. I'll be talking about that in the next couple episodes. But thank you so much for listening. It means so much. And uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'd love to hear from everybody. Eric, E-R-I-C at fitnessmarketingalliance.com. Mm-hmm.